How are you? My name is Ishal Abdul Halain. Welcome to my video on the introduction to assembly language. This is the final part of a four-part video series that lays down the fundamental concepts you need to know before you start writing programs in assembly language for the 68K microprocessor. Move, the final five addressing modes. Let's begin. Our ninth addressing mode is the absolute short addressing mode. This addressing mode may be used to obtain the operand which lies in one of two 32 kilobyte memory blocks. The operand must lie in between address 0 and 7 FFF, or between FF8000 and FFFFFF for you to use this addressing mode. If it lies in between 0 to 7 FFF, you will specify the address as a 16-bit number between that range in order to obtain your operand. However, if the operand lies in between FF8000 to FFFFFF, you will specify the address as a 16-bit number between that range. You do not have to specify it as the exact 24-bit number. This addressing mode may be used for operands that are byte, word, and long word in length. Although this sounds confusing, after the example I am sure you will understand this addressing mode easily. Now for two examples on this addressing mode. The initial condition shows two 16-byte memory blocks. The first block starts at address 003C00 while the second block start at address FF8050, D1's content is unknown. Consider the instruction move.b3c08.wd1, the 3c08.w is how you identify this addressing mode. 3c08 is a 16-bit address that lies between addresses 0 to 7 FFF. The micro P must pack the higher bits with zeros to make it a 32-bit number. This results in 003c08 to be the address of the operand. On the other hand, the dot B after the mnemonic move tells the microprocessor that a byte is to be moved. Thus, the data at 003c08 is copied into register D1. Since the data moved is 77, and 77 is a positive signed number that is not 0, the status register is updated as x0000. Now, consider the instruction move.w8058.wd1. Notice that when 8058.w is used, the microprocessor will point to address FF8058 to obtain the operand even though we did not specify the address to be FF8058. This is because 8058 is a 16-bit address that lies between addresses FF8000 and FFFFFF. This in turn causes the microprocessor to pack the higher bits of 8058 with ones, resulting in a 32-bit address value which is FF8058. The dot W after the mnemonic move tells the microprocessor that a word is to be moved. Thus, the data at FF8058 and FF8059 is moved to register D1. Since the data moved is 1975, and 1975 is a positive signed number that is not zero, the status register is updated as X0000. As a summary, for this addressing mode, you just have to specify the address of the operand as a word long hexadecimal number with a dot W at the back. The microprocessor will pack zeros in front of the number to make it 32 bits if the address you specified is in between address 0 to 7 FFF, or, on the other hand, it will be packed with ones if the operand you desire is in between addresses FF8000 and FFFFFF. This packing of either zeros or ones is known as sign extension, let's move on. Our tenth addressing mode is the absolute long addressing mode. This addressing mode may be used to obtain the operand which lies in a 16 megabyte range. The address of the operand is specified using a 24 or 32 bit binary address written using a 6 or 8 digit hex number respectively. This addressing mode may be used for operands that are byte, word, and long word in length. Now for the examples. The initial condition shows a 16 byte memory block starting at address A56C20. Initially, the contents of D1 is unknown. Consider the instruction move.la56c2ad1, the a56c2a, preceded with the dollar sign tells the microprocessor that the absolute long addressing mode is in use. a56c2a, is the address of the operand and is a 6 digit hex number. The dot l after the move command tells the micro p that a long word is to be moved, thus, the long word data starting at this address, which is 81103071 is moved to register d1. Since the data moved is a negative signed number that is not zero, the status register is updated as X1000. Now, let's do one more, consider the instruction move.lffa56c2ad1, the microprocessor will move the data from address a56c2a, into d1, the ff value is neglected. In fact, 
if FF is replaced with any two digit hex number, it too will be neglected. Notice that FFA56C2A is a 32 bit binary number written as an 8 digit hex number. However, since the microprocessor recognizes the syntax as an absolute long addressing mode instruction, only A56C2A, which is a 24 bit binary address, is used as he address of the operand. The dot L after the mnemonic move tells the microprocessor that a long word is to be moved. Thus, the long word data stored starting at address A56C2A, is moved to D1. Since the data moved is 81103071 a negative signed number that is not zero, the status register is updated as X1000. As a summary, for this addressing mode, you can specify either a 6 digit or 8 digit hex number as the operand's address. However, the 68K microprocessor will just consider the first six digits as the address. Note that only even addresses can be used with this instruction. We are left with only two more addressing modes and we are done, just two more slides. Program counter with index addressing mode. For this addressing mode, the operand is located in memory. An instruction using this addressing mode retrieves the operand by pointing to its address. The address is calculated by adding the program counter's value, signed index register's value and an 8-bit signed displacement value whose range is in between negative 128 and 127. You may use any of the address registers or data registers as the signed index register in the instruction using this addressing mode. The size of this register can only be word or long word in length. On the other hand, the operand size supported for this addressing mode can be either byte, word, or long word. Now, for an example, two 16-byte blocks of memory content is shown here, the first starts at address 5000 and the second starts at address 15000. Initially, the program counter's value is 5000. Data register D6 is 10004 and D5 contents are unknown. The instruction in this example is move.b2pcd6.w, D5. The destination operand is data register D5 and the source operand's address will be calculated using the 8-bit signed displacement value, program counter's value and the value in register D6. Upon execution, 5000 which is the program counter's value and the word length value in data register D6 are added. Note that D6 is chosen as the signed index register. Thus, we have 5000 plus 4 equals 5004. The 8-bit sign displacement value which is 2 is added to this result giving us the operand address of 5006. Since the operand size is a byte, the value 66 from address 5006 is moved into the destination register D5. Note that 66 in binary is non-negative since its MSB is 0 and 66 is clearly non-zero. Thus, the N and Z flag of the status register are both zero. Let's do another example. The instruction being considered now is move.l negative 2 pcd 6l comma d5. What is the destination in this case? Yes. It's again data register d5. Upon execution, pc and d6 are added. Note that d6 length is now a long word, thus, we have 5000 plus 10004 equals 15004. 15004 is subtracted by 2 which is our 8-bit sign displacement value in this example. The results is 15002 and is the address of our operand. Since the source operand size is a long word, e, 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 3, 4, 4, 7, 6, is loaded into register D5. This is a non-zero result, causing the Z flag to be zero. If converted to binary, the MSB of the operand is 1, thus the negative flag is set to 1. The status register's value is shown after the execution of this instruction. Note that the source operand using this addressing mode can also be of word length. As a conclusion, the operand resides in memory, the 68K microprocessor will add up the program counter's value, the value in assigned index register, which can be any one of the data registers, and an 8-bit signed displacement value to obtain the operand's address, the operand is then copied from this address into the destination register, it's that easy. We will skip the 12's addressing which is the program counter addressing mode, its application is limited, thus we will jump to number 13 which is the quick immediate addressing mode. This addressing mode is similar to the immediate addressing mode where the operand's value is specified in the instruction, one difference is that you may use this addressing mode only with instructions that have the letter Q at the back, for example the move Q command. 
Another difference between this addressing mode and the immediate addressing mode is that it only permits byte-sized operands to be used, however, the result is a long word, this is because bits at higher positions from E operand are sign extended, they are interpacked with zeros or ones depending on the value of the MSB of the operand. Thus, although the permitted operand size is only a byte, the result is a long word. Let's do an example to clarify this. The initial condition shows that D1's value is unknown for now. Move Q2C D1 is our instruction. Since the operand is 2C, we will check its MSB when it is written in binary format. The MSB is 0, thus the data moved into D1 is 0000002C. It's a long word representation of 2C. You get the idea. The status register is updated as X0000 because 2C is a positive non-zero number. Move Q241 D1 is our next example. Notice that 241 does not have a dollar sign in front of it, this signifies that it is a decimal number. The equivalent hex code is F1. Since we know now that the operand is F1, we will check its MSB when it is written in binary format. The MSB is 1, thus the data moved into D1 is FFFFFF1. I don't know why this is done, but the value clearly is not F1. Maybe you can tell me why in the comments. Anyway, the status register is updated to X1000 because the final data moved into D1 is a negative and non-zero number. Our last but not least addressing mode is the implied addressing mode. This addressing mode is recognized in the syntax of an instruction because it is bound to several specific registers. The registers are the stack pointer, SP, program counter, PC, user stack pointer, USB, and the status register, SR. Only word length operands can be used with the implied addressing mode and it does not have to be specified in the instruction, very cool. Now for our last example. The initial condition shows a 16-byte memory block starting at address 8000. The 16 bits of the status register is also shown in binary, the system byte, which are the upper 8 bits in hexadecimal is 20. The user byte, which are the lower 8 bits in hexadecimal is 8. The instruction in our final example is move SR8000. The contents of the status register is moved to address 8000 and 8001. The status register remains as it was, unchanged. We have studied 13 addressing modes in our four-part series on the introduction to assembly language. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I will try to the best of my knowledge to answer you. I plan to upload more educational videos in the future. I hope that you have already subscribed to this channel by now so you won't miss any new updates. Thank you for your time, interest, and attention, have a good day.